Hello, welcome to Puzzle Master. Today I'm going to be showing you the solution for the Hanayama cylinder puzzle, which means I'm going to show you how you can separate all five of the cylinder pieces individually and then how you can put it all back together into that original cylinder position. Now the cylinder puzzle is a level four out of six on the Hanayama difficulty scale and it is a level eight out of ten on the Puzzle Master difficulty scale. And if you haven't already got the cylinder puzzle for yourself, then you can pick it up from our website, puzzlemaster.ca. And without further ado, let's crack on with the solution. Okay, so here we have a fully assembled cylinder puzzle. And this one, we are gonna crack almost like, or solve, almost like we're cracking a safe. It's gonna be, a lot of it is gonna be based on feel to start with. And there is a few moves that are quite challenging to do or challenging to find because you're essentially solving it blind. Now to start with, what we are gonna do is, there's no difference between the sides. It doesn't matter which side is up, they're both exactly the same. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the top dial and we are gonna turn the bottom dial until we get to a point at which we feel a bit of resistance. So here you can see it twists when I'm in this position here. So once we get to that point there, we've hit a bit of resistance. So we've got one piece in the right position. What we're then gonna do is being careful not to move any of the dials, turn it over, and then we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna hold the top dial and we're gonna turn the bottom dial until something drops through. One of those pieces drops through just like that. Once it does drop through, you'll notice that the, the dials are somewhat lined up. What we want to do then is turn the bottom dial one more notch and then another notch. So two notches in a clockwise direction. And at that point, you'll be able to, so you can see this piece has dropped through should be able to push it all the way back through to the other side in here. Once we've got that, we're then now looking for if we've got the right one of these three middle pieces because one of these is slightly different to the other two. And once we're in this position as well, clamp down on the dials. Do not let the dials move independently of each other. Once you've got them both lined up in this position and you can push them all the way through, do not move from that position. So what we're looking for here now is whether we've got the right uh, middle piece. So what we're looking for is not the this piece. So uh, here you'll see that there's a big gap in this bottom bit and two walls at each side. And when we push it to the other, through to the other side, you'll see exactly the same thing. A big gap with two walls. So this is not the right piece. Now, because we know that the gap the gap in the both dial pieces is now lined up to this third of the puzzle. What we can do now is push that piece back into the middle and then make a note of where this point is, the two notches, and you're just going to move the puzzle around a third of the way and then we can test out this piece here. So again, if you've got it right, it'll drop straight through. And here again, we've seen the wrong piece or the wrong bit but that doesn't necessarily mean we've seen the wrong bit up here. So again, we've got a big gap and two walls up here, a big gap and two walls. So that is the wrong piece as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put it back into its sort of original level and then turn all three pieces a third of the way around. And we now know for a fact that this piece here is the right piece. So here you'll notice that there's a gap and two walls, the same as we've seen so far. But down here, you'll notice that there isn't a big gap and there's just one big groove going all the way across. That is important for solving, for getting to the next stage. So we want the big groove bit to be the bit that is down. So we don't want to be in this position. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the puzzle over into this position. And from here, we can now make more progress. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna grab the bottom piece like it is a, a handle and we're gonna rotate, keeping both dials locked together into this position. So the actual middle pieces move anti-clockwise and the bit that is in a clockwise direction to the first bit that dropped down 
is now the piece that's dropped down. And once we're in this position, sometimes as well this piece will drop all the way through. So at the minute these two pieces that are dropped through are on the same level, we want the piece that has just dropped down to go down to the next level, which might happen immediately. But if it doesn't, which it's not likely to, all we're going to do is hang on to the top dial, turn the bottom dial around all the way until that second piece drops down to the next level. Okay, so at this point, we've got this piece at the original level, this piece one level down, and this piece two levels down. And what we can then do is carry on turning that bottom dial, keeping the top dial still, and that bottom piece, when those two don't move, will just drop out of the bottom. So that's one piece of those three pieces got out. And now what we can do is we can actually see where the grooves in each dial are, where the holes are. And what we can do is now, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. Yes, we can. So you can see that there's two sort of grooves in those dial pieces. I'm going to adjust them so that they are both level. And then what I can do from there is just line up that second piece, the first piece that dropped down. And then these three pieces just all separate from there. And for reassembling the cylinder, you can see quite easily now that there's two bits that are exactly the same and one bit that isn't. So we're, that is important in terms of which order we're going to put these back in. With the dial pieces, the dials, yeah, the dials. So we're going to line those up so that those grooves are lined up in this position here. So you can see that the gap is in here. And we're going to take one of the two pieces that are exactly the same and we're simply going to re kind of replace it. We're going to place it on that top level where it's going to end up anyway. So there's no real sliding about to do with that one. We're then going to take the piece with the groove in and we're going to place that one level down to the piece that we just put in. So this is the only piece that you'll be able to put in halfway and it'll twist around into this position. Then we're going to line it up so that the gap is here and here so that we can then place in this final piece into this position. Push it up as far as you can. Obviously, it'll get blocked by this bit getting in its way. Once you've done that, hold that piece in position underneath here and just push these the two pieces that are already in around and you'll be able to push this the piece that we've just put in the final bit to go in all the way back to that original level. And again, using the knowledge that we have that the gap is between here and here, all we're going to do is use the bottom part of this piece as a handle again to turn the pieces around to that position. Then we can just push it back up into place. And then here we don't have to clamp down on the dials anymore. Once it's in that middle position, we simply twist the dials so that they aren't lined up and we got lucky there. And that is how you reassemble the cylinder puzzle. So there it is. That is how you disassemble and then reassemble the cylinder puzzle. The first half of that, the disassembly part, is definitely the harder of the two. The first half of taking it apart is all about feel. It's about getting the dials turning until you feel certain parts like you are cracking a safe. The second half of taking those five pieces apart are about not losing track of where the gap is and sort of manipulating those three pieces in the right order to get them separated. But putting them back together is a little bit more straightforward. There's less moves. There's not really any feel to it whatsoever. So it's a little bit easier to put back together. And hopefully this has helped you solve the cylinder puzzle for yourself. If you want to pick up more puzzles just like the cylinder puzzle, then check out our website puzzlemaster.ca where we have the biggest variety of puzzles on the internet in the world. And until next time, I will see you later.